What is up, everybody? We're going to be jumping into this video. Let's go and take a look. Whoa! Extreme close call. Whoa! Ended in disaster. Little bit off road. Hey, gravel there. Oh no! This beginner. All right, chaos riders. First street bike and already experienced this first tank slip. Yeah, first street bike tank slapper. A little bit. I think I've. When I first started riding, I kind of had a little one, but I was on a Harley, and they didn't have very m any. <laughs> they didn't have any technology um, outside of the old school technology. We got a tank slapper. Just got his Probably just bike. everything's new. His first tank hit a bump, maybe. Yep, hit a bump. You see the the change in the road. His first tank slapper. So it's increasing the speed and hitting this bump. Handlebars are slightly turned. It's just going to happen sometimes. And the best thing you can do is just kind of go with it. Uh, sometimes Some people say accelerate. Some people say apply the brakes. But the thing that's happening is is that front, front suspension is just kind of doing this. Okay, It's supposed to do this, but it's just doing this. And that's what's causing this. So you want to get that weight off that front tire. So you increase the, the throttle, and, and that's, that's what they're saying, is increase the throttle. It's going to lift weight off the tire so it can stabilize. But when it comes to it, it's kind of freaky. You're kind of screwed for the most part. Make sure you wear full gear. Thankfully, nothing happened. When it comes to All right, here we go. The road, cars aren't the only thing you need to watch out for. No, not, not really. Whoa! Hit by rusty metal. Okay, I don't think you're gonna need a tetanus or anything like that. Tetanus shot. But yeah, well, this is gonna be something that you had nothing to. You couldn't. You couldn't really avoid this outside of maybe swerving left at this point. But I mean, it's like, what is that? Before you can even an ask yourself, what is that? It's already hitting you. So uh, thankfully, it's not gonna hit him in the face. But this could do some damage. So after you hit this, pull over, check everything. And he's got a quad lock. That's exactly why I have it on my handlebars. It's like a little mini map. Absolutely love it. Check it out. Links in the description. All right, here we go. Having some fun. Ooh. <laughs> Couldn't even say having some fun in the mountains, in the woods. Let's take a look at this. So we can pull this apart and we can really just go in, going crazy in here. It's like, you know, we have a crest of the hill. We have a blind turn. We have a lot of a bad line of sight. We don't have good escape paths. We have an area where anything can jump out at us. I mean, we can kind of go down and dirty into this, but at the end of the day, just kind of go, go to the speed limit, pick a good line, plan your ride, make sure that we're in a good position for safety. So other vehicles can't come at us. Cause that's going to be the most common thing. Uh, locate any hazardous situations. This is all pretty much hazardous at this point because anything could happen here. Assess relevant threats, like I said, vehicles, gravel, navigate around them if you possibly can. With a deer, though, I mean, there's not much you can do. So he did apply the brakes. You can see how he's sitting, okay? So we're sitting right here. So you see how much of the, the front dash is here? We're sitting down. Once we applied a lot of brake pressure, you start to see this whole area disappeared because he's going up. So the weight is transferring from just a normal seat to now he's like, oh, it, he's going up and over because he's applying some brakes. So it's just really cool to see, you know, from a camera perspective. See how he went up? Yep. Good job with the braking. Honestly, if you didn't brake, you would have hit the deer. And then we would have broken the deer. And the motorcycle and his spine and yeah. Anyways. Whoa. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Spidey senses? That's a... Woo! Wow. Wow, 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 wow. A Porsche, huh? All right. So here's the thing. When when Chaos Riders are saying Spidey Sense, that is going to be orange stage. We're in, excuse me, we're in absolute orange, orange stage. We're in red stage. Absolute red stage, like Spider-Man. Uh, what, what's happening here is that you're going to have to be paying attention to everything in like a split millisecond. If somebody comes out, you have to have the perfect perception and reaction time because your total stopping distance is terrible. Any action that you're going to take is going to be delayed because you need a lot of room at this speed. You're going to be traveling pretty far at this speed. You're going to need really good situational awareness. You have to be on high alert. Adrenaline's going. You need to be in fight or flight mode the whole time, and I get it. A lot of people are like, I love being in fight or flight mode. I love it. That's why I ride a motorcycle. Well, you like the flow state. 
Okay, I, I don't know. I personally, well, maybe you do like the adrenaline. I don't like the adrenaline. My life is already too hectic. And when I ride, I want it to be nice and smooth. I want to desensitize, desensitize my, my nervous system. I want to just relax. I want to just go. When I go home, I am making sure I'm relaxing. I give myself some self-care in that way. So when I see people do this, it's like they're just constantly high alert, high alert, high alert, high alert. Their adrenaline's going. Their nervous system's on, on full blast. They're able to make quick adjustments. They're in that flow state. Well, guess what? You can also get in that flow state by going at a slower speed and really absorbing and grounding yourself to the fact that you are riding. Okay, you can do that while you're going a little bit while you're going the speed limit. You can, you're definitely doing that when you're riding a motorcycle at high speeds. But at slow speeds, start to think, I'm on the motorcycle, I'm being safe, I'm having a good time, the wind feels good, you know, start looking at things, start grounding yourself to the situation, it's like I'm on my way home, I, the view is beautiful, start start figuring out different areas um, of, of pleasure, of grounding versus like I need it to be high stimulating, like video games, the dopamine rush, the, the cell phones is constantly checking notifications, like boom, 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 that's like riding a motorcycle super fast, these detoxify that that dopamine you know let's slow it down let's relax a little bit you're going to rewire your brain and that's going to be more enjoyable okay if you're going into this as more of a coping mechanism because a lot of people drink a lot of people get on the phones play video games ride recklessly do reckless things because they're coping for something they don't want to sit still they don't want to relax i'm projecting a lot here but i think if that resonates with you start riding a little bit smart, okay? Lane splitting is always risky, but if you go this fast, you better have some spidey sense to avoid getting into a bad crash. Great job with the braking, though. Absolute great job. Great job. Same situation here. Okay, watch out. Open spot. There you go. Good job with the swerves. Get yourself in a better position. Very good. Same person, I believe. Yep. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, lane filtering on the left. All right. This rider was just moving on. Away from the road just inches. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh. He was able to avoid the bad accident. What the f them? Whoa. That was close. So you see we're blocking traffic at this point? Okay, let's go back just a little bit. Let's just go back. So we're going up to an intersection. We already know we should be in orange stage, prepped and ready, covering those brakes, looking for escape paths, planning our ride. Let's go ahead and plan our ride a little bit. So right now we cannot see. Let's get my pen out. We haven't used that in a while. We can't see around this vehicle. Okay, we just can't. We have a line of sight issue. We have a line of sight issue where our vision is obscured by this vehicle right here. Let's go and get out of the way. There we go. By this vehicle right here. We don't know where the left turners are. We don't know if there's any left turners. This is an intersection. We're in orange stage, prepped and ready. We know what we need to be doing. We need to be looking for escape paths, position ourselves over here so we have a better line of sight sooner. We still probably can't see, but we know that this spot is a left turn. We know in front of that person is a left turn. You guys are you're facing each other in that left turn uh, lane. So you know that there could be somebody there. And you see that there's a big gap right here. This is a great opportunity for this vehicle to go through. Big gap. So all these different patterns that we're thinking about and talking about here on the After Action Reviews, which you guys need to understand that After Action Reviews isn't supposed to just like dog on people. The After Action Reviews is to really be critical and, and to understand what went right, what went wrong, and how we can use that information to become better ourselves. And that's what we're doing here. So we're coming up to this, and look, at, there's, there's the left turner. Barely, but we're right here. We're right here. So at this point, you know, we need to be applying a lot of brake pressure, which is what he's going to do, this rider's going to do. But also when we're coming up to intersections, what we do in orange stage is that we're rolling off the throttle going into the intersection so we get that weight on the front tire because we're engine braking a little bit. It's also slowing us down a little bit. So now our total stopping distance is also decreasing if we needed it. And then now since we're slowing it down a little bit, and we are in that mindset of we might need to do something, we're scanning for escape pass, we're covering that front brake just in case, and when that person does come out, we're already ready. Okay, I do that, I, I do that quick movement, but it's really a squeeze, and you can squeeze quicker, and it's going to be that progressive braking. And we kind of see that here. Oh, my God! Just a little bit, but that right there, I don't want to be this close. I really don't want to be this close. We weren't able to stop in time. So imagine, so right now, now we stopped. 
You see how far back we should be slowing it down in order to miss anything in the intersection? Oh my God! Boom, we would have hit. Somehow. And look how much farther it would have taken us to stop. That's our total, this is our total stopping distance. We wouldn't have made it. So sometimes a swerve is, is warranted when your total stopping distance isn't good enough. And he did a swerve. You know, it's not pretty, but he did it. What the f that? But at this point, you get yourself out of the road. Get yourself out of the road. No! Freaky. I get it. All right, turn coming up. What do we have here? Discoloration in the road. Probably lost a little traction, got a little freaked out. Handled it really well and getting right back on the road. Not a big deal. A little too fast. Probably. A little sharper than the MTC. Okay, sharp corner coming up. I think I've seen this one before. You see the Chevron saying it's a sharp corner? Good job straightening it up. But he did crash still. So it's still a crash, but it's not into the guardrail. It's not into a tree. It's not getting impaled. Let's go back just a little bit here. What he did was he was getting up to here, straightening it up, and he's applying progressive brake pressure as best he can. At this point, you know, the best situation that can happen is that you're going to go off-road. Uh, especially if he's going this fast. This is with his skill set. Now, a lot of you guys are probably, well, he could just continue going this way. Yeah, he, he probably could with your skills. If you're saying that, it's probably your skills that can make it. It's not his skills. And this is where we need to really understand is that just because you're good at something doesn't mean your friend is good at something. Just because you're bad at something doesn't mean your friend's bad at something. It doesn't mean people that you meet are at the same level, same journey that you've been through. You had your own lived experiences. They have their own lived experiences. You guys are just meeting each other at this point in time. Two main characters in the world, right? So what we're seeing here is, yeah, the best situation for this rider, uh, because he panicked. This was a brown stage, complete poo-poo in his pantalones. He, he decided to go off-road. The best thing he could have done in his situation is applying that brake pressure when he still has asphalt, but then he dumps the bike. So what he needs to learn from this, or this rider needs to learn from this, is like, okay, I'm re-reviewing this video. I was going too fast in this corner. I did as best I could with the skills and information I had. I applied the brakes. That's really good because I could have went into the guardrail. I could have went into the trees. I could have gotten extremely hurt. I'm glad I got full gear because he does have full gear. You could, oh, you can't really see. Well, you can see. He's in the mirrors. He's got full gear. And, uh, and then he's like, okay. If I'm going to go this fast in the corners, I should probably go to a track and practice. I should probably practice my cornering. Good. I know what I need to do next if I'm going to do this again. And we are looking at this like, we need to probably go to a track if we're going to be going this fast. Or you can be like, I'm never going to go this fast. So I'm, it, I don't think I need to go to a track, but it's a really good lesson to see what, what you could do. And that's how I look at these after actions. Hopefully he's doing fine. <laughs> Terrible situation. <laughs> Marba. This is what you call a dangerous curve because it looks okay. Like Whoa, people are not making it too fast. People are going too fast. Oh, oh, massive impact to the vehicle. This looks like a big van or a truck. So it if if it knocked his, um, I believe this is like a, a rear view mirror um, dash cam. So he. The guy really shattered this guy's front end. Unable to make that turn. So right into it. So let's take a look before it goes goes crazy. So he's going way too fast. Used a lot of rear brake. Um, this is a typical panic move. And uh, yeah, just going too fast in the corner. Failure to negotiate a corner. Now, if you're gonna if you're gonna fail to negotiate corners, you need to wear full gear. Okay, we're not wearing full gear. It's still probably, it might help a little bit in the situation like this, sudden deceleration to another vehicle. It's not very good. Um, but still, wear some gear. Uh, right here, full face, please. You know, he's got, he's got no protection, really. So it's got blurred out. So head right into the windshield. I wonder if this is a fatal crash. I wonder if this is a fatal crash. Make sure you guys are not racing around corners if you don't have the skill and just don't do it here. Do it on a track. You don't have oncoming vehicles. Now you have to wonder how the truck did not see the biker on this one. Inattentional blindness. Ooh, see this is where braking isn't always the solution. Braking can get you to where you, like it's gonna give you some time to make a decision, but if you're not gonna be able to stop in time, you need to find a swerve or find an escape path with a swerve. So we got the truck right here. 
Let's go over here. So you got the truck. So it's coming out to here. You do know now it's going to go into your path of travel. So you really, 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 really need to be paying attention to your escape paths. Okay, so position yourself for safety. He's in a decent position. He's in the middle. So think of like tennis. I know some of you guys don't play tennis, but when you go to baseline, the very back end, and you have to run to the right and hit the ball, you don't stay on the right side. You run right back into the middle because if that person hits to the left, you're right over to the left, and you go right back to the middle. So that's how I treat lane positions. I'm in the center. If there's any anything that's in the center that's going to cause me to crash, I move over to the right, but then I get right back to the center. Same thing. Anything in the center, I'm going to move over to the left, get back in the center. If I'm in the left lane, the left side of that lane, and something's there, I'm going to move to the center. So I'm constantly adjusting, but I like being in the middle because it gives, my, gives me an escape path to the left and to the right. I can have two choices. If I'm all the way to the right, and I know this looks weird on your phone or, or your, your computer when you're watching this, uh, but over, over to the right, I don't have an escape to the right. I only have escapes to the left. So I'm always going to go in the middle. So he's in a good position for safety here. He's right in the middle. Now, what we need to be doing is actually swerving to the right. So we need to be breaking, breaking, breaking. Oh, oh, crap. This is not good. And swerve to the right when we start seeing stuff. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. At this point, when you see that front end of that truck dive down, that means they're applying the brakes. Then you got to swerve to the right. Now, I know a lot of you can be like, well, Okay, Captain Obvious, I get it, I get it, I get it. You can totally, you know, you know, just armchair quarterback this, but that's the point. <laughs> that's the point is the armchair quarterback this so that we can understand it and we don't have to live through this. I'm not talking down to this guy. It sucks that he crashed, but we're going to learn from it. Isn't that like one of the best things that you could possibly do? Take your tragedy, take your thing that is ca that caused you harm and for others to learn from it so that they aren't being caused any harm if they if they can learn from it i think that's a blessing and that's what i that's what i think about all these videos all right here we go right lost focus for one second that's all it takes look forward ooh last second last second swerve so braking wouldn't have solved that problem you guys see that so last second, he's always looking to the left, wasn't paying attention, what's up here? Oh my gosh. So this is our total stopping distance right here. We have this much room to really stop in time to uh, not hit the vehicle. At 32 miles an hour, maybe, maybe, but we still have, our hands aren't on the handlebar, or on the, on the brakes yet. We still just, we barely perceived, we haven't reacted yet. And so we're, I don't think we're gonna stop in time. And right here, he's applying the brakes, and he's like, oh, I'm not going to stop in time. I have to find an escape path. I have to find an escape path. And the good thing is that he did. So part of playing your right is position your safety, locate hazardous situations. This is one. Assess relevant threats. This is one. And navigate active threats. This is one. Found an escape path. Very good with the escape path. We're going to be moving over to here, and we're going to have to just navigate it. Our buddy's right next to us. We still handled it. Good job. Didn't crash. Hey. Hopefully you learned from that. Pay attention up front. This rider was having a good time when all of a sudden... Are these uh, e-bikes? Oh, we've seen this one. Car comes up behind. Car, car comes behind, hits this guy. So e-bikes taking up all lanes of the road. All three lanes with just a bunch of e-bikes. Going under the speed limit, probably, because it can't match the speed limit. And uh, when you're doing that wheelie, you can't see the brakes, uh, the brake lights. You're just invisible at night. Um, just pick one lane, guys. Just pick the far right lane. Just stay in the far right lane. Do your stuff. Luckily, it's okay because that could have been so much worse. Mm -hmm. Man, I had to get a root canal yesterday. I had to get a root canal. I'm just going to share with you guys. I had to get a root canal in the back. I had what was called a hot tooth. Oh my gosh, I always heard about people having tooth pain and wanting to rip their tooth out, you know, because of the pain. Yeah, I was at that point. <laughs> it was absolutely insane. I got a crown, and I guess I guess it just it didn't take, and then uh, a month later after the crown, I get a root canal. Gee whiz information. <laughs> so we've already seen this. All right, here we go. Ooh, semi-truck. Oh, the guy's going way too fast. Straight into the back of another moving vehicle. Wasn't paying attention, didn't have the skill set, just completely crashed. Hopefully this person can rescue this rider because it's very dangerous. He's just continuing going. 
Look how far the bike went. Oh my gosh. This driver was having a hard time trying to get around a group of riders, and it seemed like he's had enough. Okay, stop fighting it. Law of gross tonnage. Stop to talk to him before things got out of hand. Yeah, at this point, it's like, hey, what do you get? What do you need? What can we do for you? What can we do for you? De-escalate this. What's up, man? You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to get by. Well, you're kind of getting these guys off the road, too. It's crazy. Get past us. We're stopping up here and get on your way, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm really trying. To... Well, we'll get out of your way. I tried to pass we'll be, Hey, we'll be out of your way in just a minute. Clamp. Very good. We'll be out of your way, okay? Great. great. Okay. Very good. I really liked how he handled it. That was really good. Typically, you see people get pissed off, like really pissed off, and like start yelling at the driver and be like, What are you doing? You're trying to kill us. Ah. No, the dude's like, People don't want to hurt people. They really don't. There's, there's, there's very, like, very rare that there's, there's just malicious people out there, just malicious, just like to everybody, like evil people. That's very rare. It's typically good people having terrible days. I mean, I, I just had, like I said, I talked about that root canal. Like, I was having, like, an angry response talking to anybody. And I was just, like, short. At least it felt angry to me. I was very short. I didn't have, like, a happy face. And it was just, like, very, like, three, four sentence, three, four word sentences. Like, I'm in a lot of pain. Thank you very much. It was just very short. So, like, somebody that's, you know, hungry, somebody that's in a lot of pain, mental or physical, you know, they could have gotten just a huge fight. This guy probably just got divorced. I know that feeling. And it's like you, you're just lashing out instead of journaling, instead of processing things. And so when he's out on the road, it's going to be high stress. He's like, I just want to get around. I just want to get around. I just want to get home. I'm having the worst day ever. I just want to get home. Stop to talk to him before things got out of hand. And so this motorcycle rider hey. understood... Completely understood that this is another human being in this world, their own main character with their own vision, their own purpose, their own everything. And the motorcycle rider is asking him how he's doing. Is everything okay? Not being facetious, not being sarcastic, just like, are you okay? And then starts to understand. He's like, I just want to get around. I just want to get around. Okay, we're going to do this. We're, I have a solution for you. We're going to pull over. You're going to go ahead and get around us. We're, we're moving over. It is causing issues with us because you're kind of pushing everybody around. But, hey, we're going to move over so you can continue on with your day. Absolutely love this. This is a perfect example of what you should do and how you should act with other people. It's difficult. I struggle with it sometimes, but I'm getting a lot better. Journaling, healing process, you know, mental health issues. But, oh, man, I'm, I'm really proud of this motorcycle rider. I want to watch it again. Man, you all right? Calm voice, too. Well, you're kind of getting these guys off the road, too. It's crazy. Get past us. We're stopping up here and get on your way, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm really trying. Man. Well, we'll get out of your way. I tried to pass we'll be, Hey, we'll be out of your way in just a minute. Klamath, okay. we're going to pull over and we'll be out of your way, okay? Great, great. Okay. So the guy just wanted to be heard. He kept repeating himself. He just wanted to be heard. So validating is really good. And that was... Yeah, that was it. So thank you so much, Chaos Riders, for letting us watch the video. But we're going to be jumping into another one real soon. Thank you so much for you putting this together. But uh, real quick shout out to the MTC Rider Academy members. You guys are sponsoring this kind of training. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, yeah, let's go and get on to the next one, right? Mm hmm?